Hello, everyone, and welcome back. The back nine of the 2022 Skyline Classic presented by Discraft. We're here on the Silver Fox course, and we've got a great battle. I'm going to be bringing you the action. I'm Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, also tournament director of this PDJ B tier event, and we're here on hole 10, which offers a narrow corridor right off the bat, and then it continually climbs uphill as it also drifts from right to left, certainly favoring a righty backhand thrower. And then, of course, a green that's uh, got plenty of trees and other protection around it. It's clean everything inside, say, 20 or 25 feet, but off the fairway, incredibly punishing, just like you saw pretty much everywhere on the front nine. And that is pulled way to the right. And it doesn't appear to fight its way back out. That was Chris Meyer, who's back to even par on the round. Tom Earhart here with the best front nine, tying for the hottest front nine out of all competitors. He shot four under on the front. Scott Bertard. Two under on the front, and that's terrible. Fourth and final competitor, Andrew Nilsson. Three out of the four, hailing out of Illinois. And Bertard here, Scotty Tuhati, as he's affectionately known as. Gentleman I've known for more than 20 years. I believe has, at this point, something like 54 PDGA Open wins coming into this event. It's been around a while. PDJ member since 2001. Hails out of, originally out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, hometown of Barry Schultz, but now lives a few hours north of there. No time wasted in a run-up, or any other setup, I should say. And looks like that's a bogey coming for Bertard. Tom Earhart comes in. With his 1,008 rating, which is exactly what he shot during round number one, which was a three under over at a course just a few miles down the road during a morning round. And now everyone's playing this afternoon round. I just saw you step it up looking like you were ready, and I was like, I'm not going to get in his way. Ready to get off this hole. Somewhat stagnant here for Chris so far. <laughs> and just barely getting that to stay in. Andrew will walk away with the par. Tom will do the same. And the par by Tom is going to give him another stroke of cushion, though, over too hotty. And they're going to carry up the hill for a few feet to throw back downhill on 11. Discraft, your presenting sponsor of the event. We head down 11 at par 3, 376 feet. Definitely not the distance that's the problem. More so the protective trees here. If you're going to go right up the middle, you're going to have to miss all of the trees. Occasionally we see someone get a little bit silly and try and go up and over everything. That's something a big power lefty is more inclined to do. Most of your righty players are going to just try and punch the gap straight up the middle. Plays downhill, just real gradual the whole way. You want about 330, maybe 340 feet of power. Hopefully you're sliding the rest of the distance. Oh, 
And a favorable kick for Tom to put him center fairway. Short, but not in trouble. Looking for a flip and getting it. Near pitcher perfect shot there by Andrew. Will that hold the line? Oh, it does. And skips actually deep of the pin. And like almost every other basket out here. Once you get outside 25, 30 feet, you're probably contending with a few trees and a little bit of bushes or foliage or something. So, Bertard, probably not a good look. Eleven comes in at a 2.95 for the average. So just barely under par and just barely missing is Chris. Beautiful birdie. And sure enough, Bertard's gone 30, 35 long possibly and doesn't have a clean look. So after almost hitting the pole, he's going to have to settle for a par. As you can see, nice gentle breeze, but nothing significant on the day. Temps in the 60s. It's mid to late May. Perfect time to be playing disc golf in Wisconsin. And yes, Bertard putts with champion rhinos. Unlike anyone else in the world. <laughs> We're here on hole number 12, a par four, which is definitely a very soft par four. It does play uphill. Doesn't really give you too much of a look to actually get there unless you have an elite level arm. Just with the way the sh hole and the shape bends here. But a soft par four and one you absolutely need to be picking up. fact i'll tell you now it plays as the fourth easiest hole on the course and it averaged 3.76 now like every other hole on this course off the fairway incredibly punishing and tom just trying not to get it to go too long carry all the way to that back side because then you're gonna have to fight just to get out of the wood line and you definitely don't want it too short either and that's a favorable kick for bertard so splitting the difference between the two of them would have been just about perfect. As you can see, the disc on the left side of your screen is Bertard's and not quite to the corner where Andrew here has a much better look. I stand corrected. That was Chris's on this short left side. He's like six feet taller than me though so he's got a little more extension and then takes the skinny route all right all right working for it and Bertard did get all the way to the center of the fairway so prime position and you just have to get up and down from there same exact distance almost here for Tom It's uphill, so if you want to kind of get that nose up, maybe try to float it to the pin, give it a half bit at going in. I wouldn't be mad at someone for doing that, but the last thing you really want to do is hit anywhere on that basket and then have it roll the 30 feet into the woods and not give you a look. So I guess that's the trade-off, but the uphill does play to your favor here on the approach. A 
No problems for Chris to pick up the birdie. He goes to one under on the round. Hortard will move to two under on the round. Tom taps in. He goes to eight under overall, which is five down on the round. Currently a two-stroke cushion over Bertard. As I said in the front nine, there were nine players tied for that fifth place position. So nine players, just two back of the lead coming into this second round. So keeping an eye on the chase card for sure. As we head to hole 13, a par four, 504 feet. Initial tunnel shot right off the bat, and then it bends off into the right to the somewhat sloped green that is again protected. And from a designer perspective, this was one of my favorite holes coming out to this course and seeing this property. They did push back and make the corridor here a little bit wider than it initially was naturally, but... Wow, what a shot. Oh, and that ends up hyzering to the left. You really needed to push off to the right. You see the county sign or the brown sign up. That's a great reference point. That catches some cabbage on the right side and then gently fades left. It's just all about getting to the initial opening. You just have to be clean for the first 275, 300 of this hole. That should then set you up for a relatively easy up and down from there. But you have to get through this initial gap. All four players do. Oh, Bertard hits one of the trees up near the green. And so, albeit an eagle look, so to speak, for Chris, the way this slopes down, along with the way the green is just... Uh, really firm, and I think there's usually some pine needles and other things, so it's easy. Oh, no. Easy for something just to slide away or get away from you if you're too aggressive. So birds are not able to pick up the birdie. And the eagle... By Earhart. Again, somewhat of a soft par four. There's no doubt about that. Nick Robinson and CJ King also had eagles. And this did come in as the easiest hole on the course. There's always got to be an easiest hole. <laughs> this happens to be it. Averaged 3.3 on the round. My disc in a box has all your shipping solutions. If you need two or four mil bags, along with a box that will protect them, whether it's one, two, or three discs that you need to ship, just order a carton of boxes from me and my disc in a box, your disc shipping solution. And even a few beverages in me. Makes me really enunciate that one. Here we are, hole 14. Tom trying to take a commanding lead at the moment. This another par four. And at this point, it's just entirely redundant for me to say there's a narrow fairway <laughs> that's got terrible rough off to the left and the right. You really have to just hit the fairway, keep it in the center. You're going to probably throw away a stroke if you don't find fairway or if you get more than 10 or 15 feet off of it. Hey, 
and making it to the bend clean is certainly the number one objective here on the tee of 14. You know, we just saw a, a par four play as the easiest hole on the entire course. This still a par four, and it averaged 4.19. And that's just a toss, a flop right back into the fairway, hoping to get up and down to maybe think about a par. This being the fifth most difficult hole on the course. Good shot for Chris. A little trimming, but that will be a good-looking shot for Andrew. Maybe a little short, but overall still a good shot. Very favorable. For a guy that has the lead, that was uh, definitely in his favor. He cannot complain about that. Now, I know he's frustrated. That was a little bit of a misfire, but... That kick could have been so much worse. And then Bertard not able to step up and take advantage of the opportunity there. That was a less than impressive forehand out of a forehand specialist. Pro tip, don't play cribbage against Scotty too hotty Bertard. Of course, that begs my next question, and this is going to make you eligible. I've got some giveaways. Double G supports me. Discraft was a supporter of the event. Tom here, sponsored by Discraft. We'll find something good to give away. I promise that. But here's my question. What's your favorite card game? I just mentioned cribbage. I know it's quite Midwestern. I'm a huge fan. I've played in cribbage tournaments, hosted a few cribbage tournaments. Scotty Tuhati is a, a phenomenal cribbage player, but that's the question for you guys. Put it in the comments. I need to know what is your favorite card game to play. May or may not be, you know, with wagers and betting and, and gambling. Uh, it could be just a friendly game of 500 rummy with, with your family members. But tell me, what's your favorite card game? Put that in the comments. That will make you eligible to win something that we give away here for this event. And also, thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers and supporters. Bonus coverage. I know you guys are often seeing the top players at the top events. That will continue to come from all of our top channels, but also sometimes spreading the love around. And that really only happens thanks to all of my Patreon subscribers and supporters. Please consider heading over to patreon.com slash the disc golf guy as we're heading over to 15 a par four very windy as it plays initially from right to left but then s's back from left to right plays slightly uphill tom currently a little bit of a comfortable lead but he's got to be watching the chase card Nine players, just one off of Tom coming into this second round. So clearly anybody's game at this point. You're looking for the landing zone, just trying to beat those last trees. That'll be just fine. Uh, would you love 30 feet more? Sure, but that's a pretty good spot. See, Tom's not even a full 15 feet off the fairway here. And we'll still have work to do. I 
I feel like I was just talking about double G jerky, and now we're all thinking about it, aren't we? Chris cuts it short. <laughs> you see him kind of uh, a whole variety of emotions uh, rushing through his head as it looked like he was getting so close to the tree as he's just trying to get up and down and save his par. Bertard, however, trying to pick up a stroke here. He's running out of time if he's trying to keep up with Tom. You also see that he's just one ahead of Chris. Well, 15 plays as one of the easier holes as Chris almost rings it up. Plays as the fifth easiest hole on the course. Average 3.78. So I know you're thinking that a par 4 at 426 sounds easy. Average 3.78, saying it can't be too easy. <laughs> Mentioned earlier, Bertard putts with a with a couple of very very old champion rhinos. It's a special fellow. As we head over to hole number sixteen, four hundred and five feet tunnel shot. You've got a left and a right gap. <laughs> I guess you could tell me which one you're aiming for, but right and left. Nasty off the fairway, and then a green that's surrounded by trees and bushes. Play slightly uphill on an initial incline, and then it flattens out from there. I'm going to guess this is playing as one of the most difficult holes on the course. Birdies are somewhat rare here. going to be on the left side and we've seen some great scrambling by a number of these competitors almost all of them have had a shining moment or two in being able to get up and down and recover again it feels so consistent that you have to find the fairway on this course otherwise just wasting a stroke to get back out to it does that flip up enough oh gets a little bit of a good kick so it's not Going to have quite the distance, but at least it got a good kick back out into the center of the fairway. That's going to square him up for either the right or the left side gap here. And that's a solid approach shot there for Chris. 16 came in at 3.24. <laughs> finding a lot of airspace that I don't think he saw up there and certainly wasn't going for. We'll see if he still has a look to be able to get up and down and save it, but 
pulled that one tight. Here's Bertard. Knowing he needed more push on that. Just about circle's edge to save the par. Oh, yeah. Nice. Of course, in 2023, I invite you guys to come play in the Skyline Classic. As Bertard converts, I believe we're scheduled for some around, sometime around April 15th and 16th. You'd play just one of those two days, depending on the division. Some people go with that Ironman option or approach and end up playing multiple days if they're eligible for multiple divisions. Certainly adopted the huge player pack mentality, so everybody gets 150% or more of their entry fee back in a massive player pack. You certainly come join us. It'll be a good time. I started playing disc golf with my family when I was eight years old. When I was 16, I got my first job as a cook at a bowling alley, and that's when I made my first batch of beef jerky. As I got better at throwing, I also got better at making beef jerky. Everyone told me they loved my jerky. After 15 years of making my beef jerky as a hobby, I decided to make it available to everyone. Double G Craft Jerky. Give it a try. You're going to love it. And you know who gave it a try. Every single competitor, well, not, not the pros, every other competitor at this event got themselves a bag of double G jerky. Honestly, it's become pretty much a staple at all of the tournaments that I run that you're going to get your choice of double G jerky. And uh, super happy to work with those guys on many fronts, including tournament registration and tournament player packs as we see Bertard come up short out here on the quarry hole hole 17 as you can see the most open hole on the entire course oh and what a shot by Andrew that's going to come up just short. Tom currently sitting with a three-stroke lead over Bertard. Question is, how is he doing to the rest of the field? Right now, beating everyone else here on the lead card. That one flips up, but then is going to... Ultimately finished short and left. Blind look for Bertard. Tom, who hasn't birdied in a while. In fact, he took an eagle on 13. Oh, no. He took the eagle back on 13, a birdie on 12, but otherwise haven't seen too many birdies from him on this back nine. Now Chris with a look at birdie. Well, he'll keep looking. Nice steady comeback there for Tom. Tom's had just one blemish on his scorecard. That was back on hole two where he had a bogey. Otherwise, it's been birdies, pars, and eagles. We saw the near ace run. We see just how close, as it must have flashed just in front of the basket to be that close and on that right side with the forehand. So great drive 
by Andrew. He's going to pick up the lone birdie on the card. And we're heading into our 36th and what presumably should be our final hole and a very narrow corridor, a very tight tunnel here on hole 18, pushing all the way down, then eventually fades from left to right and then straightens out at the very end, 354 feet. Oh, that looks so good out of his hand. Hole 18 comes in as the third most difficult hole on the course. And really, if Bertard wanted any miracle or chance to hunt down this guy, he would have needed to have a shot that rivals that, and he doesn't. Thomas trying to lock it up here on hole 18. Incredible shot. Chris pulls it right, and that's going to be trouble. Hard kick off to the left side. That's some great forward progress to even give himself a look at saving par, any chance at saving par from way over there. And even better for Andrew. He's sitting at three under for the round. Retired, looking for a skip as well. And Chris is going to finish with a bogey here, which will bring him just to one under on the round. And this is too hotty to save his par and that's going to be short so he's going to shoot just two under on the round that's going to be a six under effort on the weekend Andrew hoping to stay at six here oh and it slides back out yeah takes ownership of it i can appreciate that was a little bit short so he's gonna head to five under overall and look at this incredible effort by tom Earhart. that's gonna be a 10 43 rated round he shoots eight under including the eagle that he had and spoiler alert folks no one was able to catch him Thomas Earhart, your champion here at the 2022 Skyline Classic, presented by his sponsor in Discraft. Congratulations to Tom Earhart. A big old tie there for second. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Tell me what your favorite card game is. You can win some sweet prizes. And I'll see you guys at the next one or come play in the Skyline Classic in 2023. Thanks for joining.